Hi folks, thanks for checking out my video. This is the third race for the Formula Ford Challenge Series run group at the VRG's Watkins Glen event a few months ago, back in September. This is my favorite race of the weekend. Weather's great. I'm running, looks like I'm starting fifth here. Uh, and I'm just having a great weekend, so. Uh, it occurs to me that through all these videos, you've only seen this view. So you might not know what my 1969 Bacon MR7 looks like from the outside. So here's a few photos uh, taken by a friend of mine, Bill Stoller. Show you what it looks like. These are all from the weekend. That's coming up through the S's, also coming up through the S's. Joe Griffin there behind me. There's the whole field. That I think that might even be the start for this race. Up front we have Mark Clark in his Crosley 32F. Second we've got Dan Pianowski, Crosley 30F. It's a bunch of Crosleys up here. Uh, Stephen Adams is starting in third in the Mola T540. That's the guy with the intake scoop you can see up there. Doug Beatty in his Crosley 45F. And then next to me in sixth is Federico Mosconi in a PRS. So I'm trying to get this wire that's coming from the radio moved out of the way. That's a radio that is, uh, it's a uh, one way at the moment that is coming from a Formula Four Challenge Series representative that's keeping track of the flags. And he would just send us any sort of information that we needed to know about the full track situations. Uh, but it was kind of getting in my way. So I'm getting warmed up here. Let me move the video forward a little bit and we'll get to the start. Okay, here we are at the start, coming up around the penultimate corner here. And I want you to keep an eye, much like the last video I did, on the speed here. See, the pace car's got us at the perfect 45 miles an hour. It's going to drop us off at this speed. We're supposed to stay in tight formation and maintain that speed. But the pole sitter just speeds up. No green flag, no green flag, no green flag, no green flag. There! That's the green flag. We're going 80 miles an hour. Come on, folks. So what that does is your pole sitter is now in fourth. And your fifth, sixth place guy is up in second because he got a humongous jump because he got a running start on everybody. It's just not the way we're supposed to do things. But let's get this underway here. S feels like I'm losing a little ground right off the bat. But everybody spreads out, goes defensive, and then they get... Well, this looks a lot like the last race. Joe's aggressive on the first lap into the bus stop and makes up two places. I make up one. But Mark is not ready to give this up. He's going to hang on on the outside. Drop in behind Joe. Stay in that side. And Joe goes really, really wide. I was kind of worried about him there. I gave them a little bit of room. But I'm eager to get up on somebody's gearbox here. I don't want to let the spaces open up. That's Tim Hannon behind me. He's in a Hawk DL17. Same players as usual. All 
Alright, coming around to the end of the first lap. I'd like to close this gap up to Joe if I can. Tim's coming up behind me in his Hawk DL-17. I'm not terribly interested in letting him get by me here because I really want to go hunt down these guys up front. Now right in front of me now is Dan Pinowski and he's having some sort of an issue. I'm not sure what. But he's going to help me out a lot right here. I'll go on the inside of him. He's just going to wipe the rest of the field right off my tail. Look at that. What a nice guy. So now I'm free to fly. I can go chase these guys down. I don't have to look at my mirrors very much. Again, Joe is super, super wide going into there. I don't know what the deal is with that. It keeps scaring me. a little worried now that I'm going to be stuck in this no man's land. I'm not going to be able to catch the group in front of me. The group behind me might work together to catch up. That would really be an unhappy situation because I really want to go race with the guys up front. So I'm trying to keep it clean. Smooth. was a decent lap. Car feels really, really good coming up through the S's here. Loses a little lump once you get into fourth, but climbing up through there in third feels great. And I'm really enjoying the bus stop today. This corner is cool. I am flat to the floor on this. And the car just hooks up. The rear end seems to hunker down and dig in. not getting away from me up there, but I'm also not really catching them. So my best bet, what I'm thinking, is I need them to fight. I need those guys to start doing silly things, start going side by side into some corners, and then I can catch right up. Because I don't have anybody to worry about right now. All I got to do is go catch them. So the car is getting pretty well warmed up here and I'm trying to get used to what it's telling me. It's a little bit off my apex there. And I'm going to be a little off this apex here and I'm, I'm not too happy about it. So I'm going to let it run a little wider than I normally would to try to keep the corner speed, exit speed up. I don't much like going over the rumble strips on the outside there but it... Uh, I made a mistake at the apex, so kind of had to get a little bit of a back. And I seem to be doing this as a trend. Got to break that habit.
Aha! Somebody did some side-by-side -side stuff. And I am right back. Hello, Joe. That's all it takes. Out there he goes again. But just behind me there, Doug shows up. Something happened to the Lola. Steven Adams, don't know what, but he's gone, so that's a car down. Now I'm in fourth. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good place here. I'm in a good spot behind Joe. I like the gap. He's making mistakes. I've got a real shot to get in front of him on the straightaway, make a pass going into the bus stop and keeping him behind me. So I'm good. But then I look up and weirdly, this is the white flag lap. We're just finishing lap four. So I don't want to be in front of him. I want to wait for the bus stop. So I pause and the Lola comes flying by. And that means I can't dive down to my apex I lose momentum, and the Crosley comes flying by. Oh. So now what am I going to do? Now it's on. Now I've got to get all fighty about this. So Doug leaves a little gap. I'll try and keep my momentum up, but I, I just don't have the top end. I don't have the straightaway speed that these later cars have. So I'll jump in behind him. Doug is usually very conservative entering the bus stop, so I make my intentions known early and go right on by. Physics place back. I'll take that. Foot flat to the floor. Come on, let's go. Go, 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 go. Back behind Joe. Lost a spot to the Lola. Not happy about that. But I've got to get up to Joe. I've got to get right on his tail to make anything happen here. Make a dive for it. Keep him off the apex. I'll try to hold it, try to hold it. But he's got the outside line, which means his exit speed is going to be slightly higher than mine. It was worth a shot. But I got a Doug to worry about. I'm not going to... Ah! I do not want to let him by, though, so I'm going to hang on out here. Oh, he got a little loose. He gave me a wave. I gave him a thumbs up. All good. No problem. Let's go. All right, Joe. So I got to be right on him, and I've got to keep an eye on Doug. Smooth through the penultimate corner. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Don't want to do the pass here. I just want to... Oh, but he goes inside to block me, but I wasn't even thinking about it. He loses a lot of apex speed. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Checkered flag. And that was a gap of 0 .033 seconds. 33 thousandths of a second for fourth place. That was fun. Wish it had gone on longer, but that was good fun. Well, uh, thanks to all the guys in that race for a lot of fun, a great race, good, fair racing. Everybody gave each other room, kept it clean. That was a good way to finish the, uh, finish the day. So thanks to them, thanks to the VRG for putting this event on, and thanks for watching. See you next time.